in India, we have heard of countless man-eating tigers, but seldom heard of man-eating lions. Strangely, the record of killing and eating hundreds of Indians lies with two African lions. Today, I would share the story of the infamous man-eating lions of Savo of Kenya. It was a dark evening of March 1898 when Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson of the British Army reached Kenya's eastern town of Savo. Patterson was commissioned by the Uganda Railway to oversee construction of a bridge over the turbulent Savo River. Next morning, when Patterson stood proudly in front of 8,000 Indian workers or coolies welcoming him, little did he realize that his challenge would be less of engineering and more of survival. When the construction commenced, he was challenged by an unexplainable steady fall in the number of coolies. Patterson casually attributed it to internal fights amongst coolies. He was soon proven wrong when his long-time assistant, a tall, muscular Sardar, mysteriously vanished without trace one night. Next morning, the sight of lion's pug marks outside the tent sent shivers down his spine. He realized that attacks by man-eating lions was the reason of the vanishing coolies. This meant that he had to neutralize the lions right away. Since the camp was surrounded by jungle on all sides, Patterson immediately had the camp fenced by thorn bushes, posted armed lookouts, and set up fire pits along the border of the camp. The lions had to be stopped from entering the camp and shot if they enter. In spite of these precautions, the attacks by the lions continued unabated. Each night, as the sun went down, the whole camp trembled with fear, wondering who would be the next victim of that night. Soon, the lion bear would enter the camp and drag one of the sleeping coolies to the jungle while the rest of the camp listened to his helpless cries. As if to fool the guards, the lions would attack from different directions every night. Some nights, the lions came silently, while on others, they would approach roaring from a distance. Next, they would terrorize the coolies by roaring and circling the camp for hours. Undeterred by the presence of so many humans, they would move around the camp and silently choose a quarry from the sleeping mass of coolies. Soon, they started attacking even during daytime, picking up coolies while they worked. Patterson and his hunters watch during night or day was of no use. Months passed, but the lions rema remained unassailable. Soon, even the construction had to be halted. Finally, to shoot the elusive duo, Patterson left part of the fence invitingly open for them and waited. This time, the lions fooled him by attacking from the closed end and entering the camp when all the shooters had rushed to the other end. Patterson felt that the lions were reading his mind. Sometimes, as if to challenge Patterson's authority, the lions visited his tent or noiselessly picked up goats just feet away from him, avoiding the trap laid for them. Soon, mass exodus of laborers started, as they were convinced that the lions were spirits and could neither be killed or trapped, since they had already devoured hundreds of coolies. Patterson watched helplessly. After seven months of mayhem, Patterson invited Whitehead, a famous lion hunter, to Savo. 
true to the lion's not right, they attacked Whitehead the very day he arrived and dragged away his assistant in broad daylight. Whitehead lost his nerve and promptly returned to Mombasa, leaving Patterson and his laborers to their fate. The count of dead continued to rise. Finally, after nine months of futile wait, one dark November night, Patterson shot down one of the lions. Next morning, the huge 10 feet lion was exhibited to the jubilant coolies. As the construction commenced, Patterson continued his nocturnal wait for the second lion. The opportunity came in a moonlit December night. Patterson shot the lion, wounding it mortally, and had to chase it next morning and finish off with four shots, thus ending the terror of the kings of Savo. As per Patterson, the managers of Savo had killed close to 300 coolies. Today, when thousands of Indians visit Savo National Park, they are hardly aware of the havoc created by these two lions 125 years ago, which led to the writing of the book, The Managers of Savo, and the Hollywood film, The Coast of the Darkness. So please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and join me in this amazing journey where I bring you face to face with the cradle of civilization. Savannah Safari, your tryst with adventure.